Thank you for joining us again. My name is Rosita Thomas, and today we're going to talk about Recovery Happens with Mental Health, and we're going to focus on stigma. Um, when, when people are labeled by their mental illness or by a misperception, this is called a stigma. And a lot of times stigmas, or actually all the time, stigmas are based on misinformation and wrong information. For example, some of the, there's a lot of stigma around mental illness. I mean, there are a lot of, we think, well, you know, there's not that many people affected by mental illness. Well, that's not true. That's a myth. In fact, more than a quarter of our population is dealing with some kind of mental illness. We might think, well, you know, that person should just be able to pull themselves up by a, their bootstraps or it's their own personal failure that's happening. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Um, mental illness is a disease, just like cancer is a disease, just like diabetes is a disease. And there are certain things that can be done, and there are roads to recovery. So we're gonna focus on stigma, because when people are stigmatized, they are made to feel less than themselves. We may, they are made to feel that certain things about themselves that are not true. They are made to feel shame and helplessness. And when there is stigma, it not only impacts the person who is being stigmatized, but it impacts how others around them treat them. For example, even health professionals will treat someone, could treat someone differently because they are stigmatized. We have with us Michelle, who is talking about um, an experience with stigma. And as you know, stigma um, comes about when a group of people with uh, illness or skin color or whatever are stereotyped based on myths. So one of the myths about mental illness is that it only affects a few people. The truth is it affects, affects more than one in four. One of the myths of mental illness is that people are violent. And the truth is, people with mental illness are no more violent or dangerous than the rest of the population. So Michelle's going to tell us an interesting story about what happened to her recently when she was in the hospital after back surgery. I uh, was talking to my nurse uh, to receive my medication um, and, uh, you know, um, medications like for blood pressure, for, uh, you know, pain medication, and I also take medication for psychotropics for uh, my bipolar disorder. And I, um, I asked her, I had to, okay, no, okay, 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 so I, um, I had to ask her for my medication, mm -hmm. and uh, in the process, uh, felt that I needed to advocate for myself and say that I have bipolar bipolar disorder. It's very important that I receive my medication, um, and so that conversation was over. And uh, we, and anyway, she went to another room to another uh, patient. This is the nurse. This is the nurse, and. Uh, and the first thing that the patient said to her was, I heard that the patient in the other room has bipolar or is bipolar. Is she dangerous? How did that make you feel? That made me feel very angry. Uh, that made me feel very sad, um, but very angry that I was in 2015 in a hospital getting my back worked on, which I needed and was so important and I'm doing so well now but um, at that time it, it just felt like such a um, it was just an awful thing to say and it occurred to me that that she was probably not the only person in the world that felt those things or thought those things and I thought how important it is to talk about stigma and to talk about um, and, and hope to dispel things about it mm -hmm. because it just was upsetting. And the truth is, Michelle, you've never been violent against anybody, right? Absolutely not. Robert, you have an, a, a very uh, interesting example about how you describe stigma. Can you, can you share that with us? 
Yes, uh, basically, if you're riding on a bus and you have someone sitting beside you and you confide in them and tell them that you have cancer, uh, they become very sympathetic. Whereas if I'm riding on a bus and someone's sitting beside me and I tell them I suffer from bipolar disorder, they smile and tend to move one seat over uh, as if they're going to catch it. Because of the stigmas, because of the myths and misperceptions people have about mental illness, um, others will treat you differently based on those misperceptions, those false myths. Well, I was guilty of it too. Um, before uh, I reached a point of acceptance, um, I would actually look for any little fault within someone, someone else that actually told me of their diagnosis to prove that I didn't have it. Um, if they bounced their weight too much, that was my way of saying, see, nothing wrong with me. Um, it was impossible for me um, to have a mental disorder because in my mind, um, mental disorder, let's see, lived on the streets of D.C., pushed the grocery cart, had a bunch of cans, talked to themselves all the time. Um, and that's just the way my mind worked. Uh, so there was nothing wrong with me. Um, people with a mental disorder couldn't work a regular job. I had a job. People with mental disorders didn't get married. Um, people met, you know. So I was guilty of, you know, um, falling into that stigma. Right, that and then so when someone with a mental disorder actually has these stigmas as well, it's, that in a way makes it hard for them to seek help, wouldn't you say? It made it very hard. Um, one of the things I was telling, um, uh, my therapist one time was that I remember going to a hospital um, my first time and um, they told my wife uh, upon uh, my release well and my wife had told him I think he's manic uh, my wife told him but the doctor said well, no we think he's just an alcoholic and a drug addict and I was actually very proud because I could look at her and tell her, look, see, I told you, nothing's wrong with me. I'm just an alcoholic. Um, in a sick way, it was better for me, to me it was better to be an alcoholic and a drug addict than to uh, accept that I had a mental disorder and that I needed help. For me, it's hard to explain to somebody that I have schizophrenia because of the stigma, because I think they're going to think, oh, he's, he's uh, schizophrenic. And like, or he's a schizo, and um, there are many movies out there that play schizos, and they, they make them look like they're like crazy, and like they, or they're like they can't take care of themselves. They're hearing voices, or have like a split personality change or something. But uh, yeah, it's it's just um, it's hard like to explain that to somebody. Today we're talking about stigma, and Kevin is going to tell us a little bit about what stigma is and some of the negative consequences. I mean, when people have misinformed perceptions of a mental illness, they will then react and treat you differently. And those things are hurtful because that person who is being treated differently feels bad and the person who is doing that loses out on the benefit of having this fabulous friend or fa fabulous acquaintance. Tell me, um, Kevin, what are some of the beliefs, the myths that people have about someone who has schizophrenia? People think that you're in, you're in constant psychosis, that you're um, out to hurt other people or hurt, 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 hurt you know, to do ill on others. and. Um, are not able to um, uh, function as a whole human being. They don't. They see you as, as sick, and, 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 that may, and that may be just a very short or temporary uh, thing that you're in at the time. That you you, you are a whole person. Um, you have feelings, emotions. Uh, 
you have um, that you you do things. You may work or you you, you do uh, things in the community. Uh, you may be raising a family or um, um, general productive person in society, and um, they have a tendency to when they hear the word schizophrenia to think that or, uh, they're. There's not, they, they, they think of it as hopeless and sometimes. Mm -hmm. And Kevin has a good story about a friend of his who then found out that he had, that Kevin had schizophrenia and then began to treat him differently and it really impacted their friendship. Can you tell me a little more about yeah, that? I have a friend that um, said, you know, you have, you have schizophrenia, you know, he, he just, it would, he, he did, he, he, it felt like he distanced, or I had to distance myself from him because he judged me on my, uh, schizophrenia rather than um, me as a whole person and um, I feel that um, if you had cancer you wouldn't um, um, judge that person on their cancer you would look at them as a whole human being um, what they what what they have to you know give back and, and share and, and do things and all the things that, that, that make you as up as a person okay. and what are some of the things that people or what are some of the things that people can do to combat stigma or some, to address it? Um, some of the things is um, doing things like this, talking about uh, the illness and um, talking about um, uh, their coping strategies, uh, the, the medications that they take or um, the uh, therapies that they receive. Um, all, the, all of those play a big, big role in recovery and um, also to see the person and um, the, the things that they do in their ordinary life that um, help them to um, a, as a whole person. Have you ever been in a situation where you've heard someone talking and they have misrepresented mental illness or even a specific mental yes. illness and you've come and... One time before I, uh, when I was in the hospital I, I heard from back from a friend um, that the place I worked at, they said that he, Kevin went psycho, and you know, and, and it really uh, made me feel horrible, and uh, um, you know, it didn't make me feel um, welcomed back to that situation. And I, and I, I did end up losing that job because once I came back, um, they, they didn't accept me back. The, the employer wouldn't. Uh, I had that happen a couple on a couple occasions at jobs come back out of the hospital when you're doing better and you're 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 at your best point they have the uh, negative connotation about the illness and they won't uh, it, 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 it can be devastating and I think that one of the key learning points here is that when someone has gone through the hospital they have gone through treatment they are recovered um, it's important for those around to know that they are recovered and to understand what recovery means. I think being open about having a mental illness and letting people see us when we're not in crisis is really important. We um, do work with CIT, Crisis Intervention Team, uh, where we go in and I help train the police officers and reduce stigma uh, related to people with mental illness. Um, we um, are on the DIVERT Committee, which is uh, a system by which we try to divert people from going, people with serious mental illness who are in mental health crisis from going directly to the jails so they get the treatment that they need uh, in psychiatric hospitals. And that treatment actually ends up being, it, it's better, more beneficial for the, the consumer and it's also more beneficial for society because it ends up costing us a lot less. Yes, well, right? yes. I believe it's cheaper than just putting everyone in jail and that's pretty much what they've been doing. There's, the, there's a, a large population of mentally ill in the jail system um, and, and anyone that, that's in the jail system will tell you they're not getting the treatment that they really need. So this is a way of diverting them into the hospital, get the treatment that they need, deal with the crisis at hand. Family and the community. Right. Well, another thing I do is I'm very open about it with my friends and on Facebook. I've got just 100 friends on Facebook, but we're all very close. And I talk about having mental illness and, and the things that we do, the work that we do here. And a lot of times I'll get a, a private message from several of my friends when they know they have a nephew or a cousin that has bipolar disorder. How do I handle this or that? What's the best way to approach this person? We think they might be mentally ill, but we don't want to offend them by approaching the topic. 
Um, so I think just being open about it and showing people that for the most part we're pretty normal when we're not in, in a crisis, that we can, we can function and we can work and we can do everything that everybody else does as best that we can, at, uh, you know, keeping in mind that we have certain limitations. And for me, for example, mine is stress. I have to constantly keep my level of anxiety and stress under control. Man